Today in the news, we got some juicy AMD speculation fuel from Microsoft. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. And yeah, I scratched my forehead. Let's get started with AMD. Well, actually Xbox, but I wanna focus on the AMD side of things. So Microsoft just revealed a little more information on the graphical abilities of the Series X. While we already knew that the console was equipped with a Zen 2 based CPU and an RDNA 2 based GPU, we didn't quite know what to expect or what kind of power. Let's take a look at the new information. The Series X will offer smart delivery whatever that means, quick resume for multiple games, hardware accelerated ray tracing, which we already knew would come with the next gen RDNA architecture, variable rate shading, which has been on Nvidia's Turing lineup for a while now, so it's nice to see that AMD will implement it in the next gen, and saving the best for last, 12 teraflops of GPU performance. They just say GPU performance, but we can safely assume that this is the theoretical performance in FP32. So what does that mean in console words? Well, the CPU on its own will be four times faster than the old Xbox One, and the GPU would deliver twice as much performance as the Xbox One X's six teraflops. What does it mean in PC words? Well, compared to the first gen RDNA GPUs, it will blow the RX 5700 series out of the water. The 5700 XT delivers around 9.75 teraflops. Looking at the green team, the Series X would deliver between 2080 Super and 2080 Ti levels of performance, with the 2080 Super at 11.15 teraflops and the Ti at 13.45. That's insanely powerful. Now, before you raise your pitchforks, I know, teraflops doesn't directly translate into gaming performance. I mean, the Vega 64 has 12.66 teraflops, but it's excuse me for the pun, flops in comparison to newer GPUs. And that's mostly due to its Vega GCN architecture, which is largely focused on compute. But RDNA has proved to be tuned properly for gaming, rivaling Nvidia's gaming performance. It's not exactly on par. I mean, the 2070 Super has a uh, lower T-flops, let's call it count, yet it still beats the RX 5700 XT. But AMD did work on it a lot and RDNA 2 might bring even better optimization to the table. Plus, with how similar PCs and consoles have become, I mean, Xbox uses DirectX and PlayStation uses GNM and GNMX, which is similar to Vulkan, comparing them to a 2080 or 2080 Super isn't so far-fetched. So yeah, 12 teraflops, that's nice for consoles, but I think it's even better for us in the PC market. Given the projected price of next-gen consoles between four and 500 bucks, that means a GPU in that price range should have 12 or more teraflops of performance. If let's say what's in the Xbox Series X is the future RX 6700 series, then that would be an equivalent boost of 25% without factoring in things like clock speeds, etc. This info really bodes well on RDN. Too. I just want to manage my expectations though, because, well, it's AMD. The Xbox will be fine, it's the discrete cards I'm worried about. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Yeah, only one subject. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I don't know what happened, by the way, on my forehead. I guess I scratched myself too hard. I woke up this morning and it was there.